Hi, Jennifer Binogan with DuPont Tyvek Medical Packaging. I'm here today with three guests to talk about something really new and exciting. We are going to discuss today um, and share with you a new scholarship and grant program for professionals in the area of microbiological quality and sterility assurance. It's called the Kilmer Scholarship and Grant Program. With me, I have Joyce Hansen of Johnson & Johnson. Joyce, if you want to wave. She is instrumental in the development of the scholarship and grant program. I also have Janet Proust of 3M, and she's also the chair of the board for the Amy Foundation, which will manage the program. Janet, hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and then I also have Steve Campbell, COO at Amy, and executive director of the Amy Foundation. Steve manages the day-to-day -day operations of the foundation. Hi, Steve. That would be me. <laughs> Thank you all for participating in this conversation today. Um, this is, as we've talked about, going to be informal and interactive and conversational. So please speak up whenever you have something that you want to share with the audience. I am going to start the questions today with Janet. Um, this one is for you. Can you tell us a bit about the purpose and the goals of the new Kilmer Fund? Uh, thank you, Jennifer. I'm happy to talk about the new Kilmer Fund. Um, this is the next um, uh, evolution, I guess, in a long history for the Amy Foundation of providing funding for uh, scholarships and grants. This one is exciting because it's specific for a new area that Amy Foundation is focusing on now around uh, grants and um, scholarships for individuals who are seeking to advance either themselves or their work related to microbiological quality and sterility assurance. We really haven't focused with the Amy Foundation on any sort of funding for sterility assurance. So this part is really, really exciting. So we're looking at, at providing funding for scholarships. So those would be for individuals that are seeking potentially a supporting undergraduate degree or graduate work related to these areas. These are typically people who may be focused in um, uh, areas of industrial microbiology, uh, the various engineering types of sciences, physics, pharmacy, actually any sort of related field. Many people who pursue sterility assurance don't necessarily um, focus on that when they're still in school, but hopefully some of our work can change that. Um, and then also we hope to offer research grants and those grants would then be for people who are really looking to advance the science in um, micro and sterility assurance. It could be an individual or teams of people, but the Kilmer Fund through the Amy Foundation would be able to provide that, that uh, neutral mechanism for those individuals to be able to continue to advance in this area. Thanks, Janet. Um, when we were working on the scholarship the other day, Steve, you'll probably remember this, we were talking about um, chemists and different people that might apply for it and um, the concept of, well, you know, maybe a chemist will apply and we really don't want them to apply for it. And almost immediately everyone said, no, we want chemists to apply for it because they might be the ones that come up with the next best sterilization method. It would be out of the wheelhouse of a, of a microbiologist, if you will. So. Um, it's really kind of a broad um, area that we can get into. So it's, it, I think it's really exciting. Um, with that, though, I'm going to turn over to uh, Joyce and ask you, um, because you were kind of the, 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 the thought guru on developing this fund and scholarship um, program. Can you share with us what you were thinking, what the, the genesis of the thought and, and, and where you see it going? Thanks, Jen. Yes. Um, when the reason or the genesis of this is really to do with the fact that in preparation for the 2019 Kilmer Conference, the Industrial Advisory Board and I, we were all talking about uh, what's our next generation? What, where does our next generation of individuals come from? How do people get into the career? And how do we really focus on this as a career for people to get into? And we realized in looking at the 2016 information that we had with regards to the individuals that participated in the 2016 Kilmer Conference, the information we got there said that the majority of the individuals that got involved in their background and their training came from on-the-job learning. And we wanted to focus on getting more people who would be interested into the area of microbiological quality and sterility assurance. And as you just commented, Jen, 
Uh, we don't really want to focus only on the microbiology aspect of it. Uh, in order to do microbiological quality and sterility assurance, we need a broad perspective of individuals and backgrounds. We need the engineers, whether chemical, electrical, mechanical. We need the microbiologists, the biomedical engineering, chemical. It's a broad focus. But what we find is people don't know about sterility assurance. They don't know about the microbiological quality or industrial microbiology portion. And so the Industrial Advisory Board and myself started thinking about how do we get more interest in this? And one of the things we thought about was really to introduce a scholarship and or grant so that we can focus on the fundamental understanding and getting the people to understand that this is a field they could go into and uh, definitely apply. And so we wanted to focus on grants to really encourage people to look at this as a fundamental basic uh, background or a field that they could go into in the future. So this was really focused on getting more interest in the field and really um, having an opportunity for us to have a vehicle to share others with others. Uh, this is a, is a wonderful opportunity for the future. Thanks, Joyce. Um, I do need to put in the plug there, though, for packaging because this uh, scholarship and grant program, um, the total fund also includes packaging as a critical role um, through this. So if I didn't do that, I'd probably have my packaging card taken away. Um, I'm and you know, script. I'm sorry, Jen. I'm sorry. My apologies for leaving that off because we get packaging as the maintenance of sterility. So we definitely have to have packaging engineers as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to go off script for a second here. Um, Steve, I'm going to point this one to you. So we have the fund, which holds the, the money, if you will. And then we have the scholarship and we have the um, grant. Right. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between who can apply for what and, and what the difference is? Well, the, the uh, scholarship um, program is for individuals, as, as Janet was mentioning, for individuals who are seeking um, to get into the profession or advance the profession. The grant is for research work. And um, I should put in a plug for the Kilmer Fund uh, Committee which is a nine member committee that has been meeting for several um, months now. And they are rep it rep it's consisting of representatives from a variety of industry groups, industry associations and, and uh, companies. They've developed the scope for the scholarship program, the application process, the applications, what's expected of the applicants. And so they've done a thorough job and I want to thank them for all their work. Um, and that includes Jen uh, for all all your work in uh, in pulling it together. Thank you um, for explaining that, because I think that um, not everyone is used to the concept of scholarships and funds um, in their everyday profession. And so adding that little definition between the two, um, I think will help people understand if they might be eligible for one or the other. So thank you. Um, another part, and this kind of goes back to what you were saying, Joyce, is um, that it, part of the reason why we're doing this today is that people don't even always realize that these funds are out there, um, that they're available to apply for. So what I'm hoping is that maybe we have some collegiate um, programs listening in on this and, and know that they have a source to come to uh, for some potential funds for either, you know, again, scholarships or grants. Um, so hopefully some good developments can come out of it. Um, okay, now I'm going to go back to script. Um, my next question is going to go to Steve. Um, how are these grants and scholarships uh, being funded? You kind of touched on it a little bit there, but um, didn't fully go into it. Yeah, so we rely entirely on uh, generous supporters. Um, so uh, initially the Amy board approved uh, a $25,000 uh, contribution to uh, help seed the fund. Johnson & Johnson has contributed $20,000 to the fund. And we have numerous other supporters and I can't thank them enough. Uh, they, you know, large and small, every dollar counts. Uh, we have one individual who is giving his royalties on a book that he is uh, he has written, and that's uh, very kind. So that's money that we'll 
we will receive for years to come. Um, and when I donate to um, causes, I what's really important to me is that I know that 100% of the money or the majority of the money is going to the cause I want to uh, help. And I can assure you as the executive director of the foundation, that's the case here. The overhead for the foundation is minimal. So uh, almost all the money goes directly to the grant recipients and the scholarship recipients, and that's key. Uh, to date, we've uh, generated um, about $140,000 in contributions. Uh, COVID slowed us down a little bit. I'd love to double that amount. Um, and so anything you can do um, uh, with your companies or others who can support it, uh, the fund um, would be greatly appreciated. So Steve, in um, individuals that might be interested in, in helping get their companies fund, um, should they just contact you directly? Yes, and we do have an online means of contributions through the Amy Foundation website, which is in the process of being upgraded. Uh, you, they can also email me at scampbell at amy.org, uh, and we will uh, help expedite the, um, the contribution. Excellent, thanks, Steve. Um, and we'll have that information at the end um, in one of the bumpers as well, so um, that would be good. Um, in your notes, you have every dollar will help deserving students and researchers achieve their professional goals in advance of the fields of microbiology and sterilization. Um, Joyce and Janet, I'm going to bounce this one back to you. Um, do you, and this is off script, um, so completely um, off the top of your head. <laughs> do you see some potential um, areas that that people could apply for funds for that are really needing some science behind them right now. Um, so I'll start. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> There's areas that need some help right now. Um, I'm going to give you the number one in this area that, you know, has affected every single manufacturer that produces sterile goods, and it has to relate related to um, a lot of the questions and the work that needs to be done around ethylene oxide, right? A lot of focus yes. in the industry. Uh, we want to reduce the amount of ethylene oxide that is consumed and potentially, you know, um, uh, available in the environment. There's no book you can go to that says this is what you need to do, <laughs> um, despite the fact that through Amy, there's been a, you know, a, a very strong working group for many years around that. Um, working group one for ethylene oxide, yet still the issue comes up and everyone, whether it's industry, it's the regulators, it's the experts in this area, sort of scrambling to figure out what to do, like how to do that perfect example. There are many of those that aren't such a, a crisis in the industry. And hopefully through this type of funding, through um, you know, having individuals focus on it, both for their profession, but also doing this new and new to the world research, it will allow us to be able to identify these areas where we can improve and not hopefully not have so many crises happening in the future. Right now we tend to be reactive. We see that there's a problem or there's an issue and then everybody comes together and says, yes, okay, we need to do something about it. We don't come together collaboratively across industry. And I think this is one of the main things that Kilmer you know, in, in general, Kilmer Innovations is allowing us to do, and we're so thankful for that. Definitely needed and really unique, right? Really unique to have um, these number of stakeholders coming together for this. But I'm excited about this because I think the future will be there, look very different than how we're responding to things today. Thanks. If you don't mind, if I'll add a little bit to that. Um, yep. Yeah. I, I don't really. I don't really focus only on the ethylene oxide because as a, as a whole, we have an issue with regards to capacity constraints across the industry around the world to actually have the ability to achieve a sterile product, right? And understand what that means. And so for me, the focus is on uh, looking at alternatives. But by the way, alternatives does not mean we have to find a new innovative gas. 
actually might mean that we go back to the old tried and true methodologies such as moist and dry heat and really focus on what's the innovative way, what's the way for us to look at uh, reducing the potential impact to our environment, but at the same time delivering a sterile product or a microbiologically controlled product. So when I look at the research that we would love to see, it really, really does have some fundamental foundation on understanding the science and actually bringing that to uh, the next generation of that science. Not only is that science gonna be about what's currently available, because quite honestly, our products for the future will not be able to ster be sterilized with our current sterilization methodologies. We've gotta make some changes. And so what I would love to have some basic research on is really focused on how do we deliver those new products of the future without having sterilization, without having some of the um, gases and things that we've had to use in the past and how can we improve that for the future, maybe with a better digital platform. So for me, it's about two things. It's about the new products of the future and changing our thought process and how to deliver them. And then maybe adding something to that with regards to the personalized care and how we are going to deliver that in combination with the um, you know, the, the delivery of the sterility assurance level that we need for those products. So it's kind of an interesting focus, but I definitely see that there's a lot of interest and a lot of excitement about some things that we could do for the future, very different from what we've been doing in the past. Well, and to put a plug in for packaging again, because that's my love, right? Uh, this is a great opportunity for that collaboration um, in the different focus groups that um, have traditionally worked very separate from each other. So how can packaging work with microbiology or the people developing the sterilization methods? Um, how can we work to change the packaging to be able to minimize um, the EO impact or even the gamma impact um, and, and allow some, some additional capacity to open up, even though we're processing the same amounts of things? Um, so there's there's tons of areas for collaboration and innovation that are available to us right now. So this fund um, being available is going to be fantastic, I think, to allow people to work together across industry and not in their silos by either their job function or also between companies, because that's the beauty of Kilmer. And um, Joyce, I'm actually going to point that back to you um, for the Kilmer concept right now and, and what it means and why why this was named Kilmer. Yeah, thank you for asking that question, Jen, because um, so the Kilmer, the name of Kilmer really comes from the an individual. His name is Fred Kilmer, a very influential um, individual within J&J, which is why the Kilmer Memorial Conference has been named after him for many years. Um, but really, it comes up from this fact it's very critical and key to us in the sterility assurance industry because Kilmer was one of the individuals that really first linked the, the thought of having a sterile product um, and having that sterile product be able to reduce the potential for infections for patients and, and for them to actually have a better care. So for us, the Kilmer thought process is really about linking the microbiological quality needed, whether it's sterile or the controlled level of microbiological quality and reducing the potential for patients to have infections once they have had the products used for them um, and making sure that we deliver products that actually help patients to improve the patient care as well as quality of life for patients for the future. So that's why the name Kilmer is going to, it was something that I wanted to use for this scholarship because it continues that thought process of linking those two things and the value for us as an industry is really focused on final delivery of a, a really improved patient care. And I think that's the passion that we all bring to the industry. And, and so if we can link Kilmer and his innovative thought process and his ability to connect the dots early on and then utilize that for us to continue to come together as a, an industry, to show our passion for helping our patients, customers, and consumers, and having that link then to the funding to develop individuals for the future who would maybe take our places in the future and also generate that passion for them as well. 
And then if I could add on to that, you know, part of what we would really like to do here is maybe we can help fund the next Dr. Kilmer, (laughs) someone who is actually doing something extremely innovative and moving us into that area. So we're moving away from thinking about what do we have to work with to what could it be? What can it be? And then work towards that, that goal. So this kind of goes along the lines of um, something that I've been noodling a little bit on, um, and and I'm just going to drop it in there, but um, having the right person in the right room at the right time. And this, I think, fund and and scholarship uh, program will help get the right person in the right room at the right time, because sometimes they don't know that they're the right person, right? It just happens spontaneously. Um, Take it post-it notes for 3M, Tyvek for DuPont. In Johnson and Johnson, I mean, there's Kilmer himself, right? Like if he hadn't been there, we might not be where we are today. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's get the right people in the right room at the right time. Steve, back to you now for a second. Um, we've talked a little bit about um, getting funds in. Um, I know for DuPont, um, you had reached out to me and asked me if DuPont would be willing to um, contribute to this, this fund. Um, Janet, I'm guessing from a 3M perspective, it was um, through you. I'm going to ask both Steve to to help us um, a little bit more on how do we go about asking. And then maybe Janet, do you want to talk a little bit about how you got 3M to um, stand behind this as well? So Steve, first you and then to Janet. So, uh, yeah, I typically rely on the Kilmer Fund Committee, Joy's um, Janet and others, Amy staff, to provide me with the necessary contacts um, to to know who to reach out to. Um, uh, in me- most cases, in uh, in fact, maybe all the cases of all donations we've received, they've been made because it was the right thing to do. Um, they um, most sp- most uh, contributors didn't ask for anything in return. They just uh, accept the premise of in the need for uh, the scholarships and grants. We do take extra uh, efforts to make sure they're recognized. That's really important to us um, through recognize at conferences, uh, to recognize the sponsors, to uh, recognize them in our publications, through advertisements and through articles and on our website. So recognition is really important. And uh, if someone is watching this uh, video and you haven't heard from me, uh, please just reach out to me again, uh, scampbell at amy.org or go to the Amy Foundation website. Okay, if I can add on to that just a little bit there, Jennifer, you know, from a 3M standpoint, you know, we're a company that provide, you know, really prides ourselves and we're science based for innovation. We, we, we do all that. We spend a lot of money on research and development. And honestly, we're still working to be able to create additional funding coming from 3M to this uh, uh, fund, the Kilmer Fund. Um, we're 100 percent, you know, behind this. And there's a lot of I think I want to encourage companies to look at different funding sources within the company. So within 3M, we have a foundation as a potential source. We also have individual grants that be, can be given through certain t- divisions. That's a source. Every divisions and various functions have their departments. That's a source. So don't think it's just a grant that you're giving. Look deep into the, your company and see where there's potential options. Um, for nearly every medical device company, there is an opportunity that this work will directly impact your own business, your efficiency, your your um, productivity, right? Your cost, um, the ability to be able to have resources, right? The professionals and those skill sets, all, it covers absolutely everything. So I really encourage um, companies and those individuals that are representing those companies to be able to think very, very broadly about what this contributing to this fund could potentially do as the benefit to your individual company. It's not just one single funding source. If you run into a wall there, 
go to the next one and continue to be able to push forward because it's such an important endeavor that will make a difference in your own individual you know, approach to how you, your products and sterility insurance, insurance in general. It's extremely important. Thank you, both of you. Um, and it really kind of feeds into the premise of Kilmer um, with the concept of, again, going back to the collaboration aspect. Um, as I've been talking with different individuals in the MDM world, uh, the question has come up about intellectual property and them not wanting to, to share, if you will, um, the, the glory. Um, and my response back has been, Right, but you might not have the right people in the right room at the right time. And if you collaborate and potentially use some of these funds, get some funds donated in the first place, you might get from point A to point B five years faster than if you were on your own trying to solve this problem. And I think um, between the sterility assurance um, community, the packaging community, all of the different communities within medical device manufacturers, um, we all have age old questions that we're all trying to solve. But if we bring our brains together and use um, potentially some of these funds, right, to help us find those answers, we'll get there a lot quicker um, to your point, Janet. So thanks. Um, I see you nodding, Joyce, and maybe you have something you wanna add on to that. Uh, thanks, Jen. Uh, one of the things that I'm very concerned about is I feel like people feel that it, they have to go to their fund, their company to get funds, right? Um, what we have found, and I, I know Steve, uh, you and I have talked about this a couple of times, it's also a personal fund, right? It's a, an opportunity for you to give individually as well. I know um, most companies also do match funding. If you do a contribution to an organization, they will match the funds that you give individually. And I know, I know several individuals that have actually been looking to do that as well. And I would love to encourage people to think about that as well as to the ones that Janet and, and Steve mentioned earlier. The one thing that you should be aware of, and I don't know, Steve, if we talked about this before, but what we talked about originally when we started talking about putting the fund together, we talked about this as something that would be in perpetuity. So we have $140,000 today, and Steve was talking about wanting more money for that. What that would allow us to do is it's meant to be in perpetuity, meaning that we can put the money together and we envision somewhere around uh, a little bit more than what we have right now to be something that could uh, support a couple of scholarships, a couple of grants uh, every year so that it would then be something that could be a continued on to the future. If we were to get a, a larger base fund, we could then start having a little bit more money go to more grants, more funding for more scholarships. And so the intent to go to the 280 or, or even bigger than uh, what we have right now that Steve was mentioning earlier is really a focus on the opportunity for us to support more students, more grants for the future, to find more of the Dr. Kilmers of the future, to find more of the innovative thought processes and and also to fund more of the collaborative research that we've been very successful in initiating but we want to maintain that for the future how do we make that sustainable longer term so if there's a way for us to look at getting individual contributors as well as business contributors i think that might be the next avenue for us to focus on uh, us individually as well as just our companies Along those lines, um, if I may, uh, we, the Amy Foundation, has a uh, uh, a scholarship program, the Michael J. Miller Scholarship Program, for uh, clinical engineering and biomedical equipment technician students. We started this ten years ago, uh, giving five two twenty five hundred dollar uh, scholarships in a year. Now, this past year, we uh, gave 11 scholarships in the amount of $3,000 each. And again, to Joyce's point, we're using uh, investment income. So we have a principal. We don't want to touch it. We want the fund to go on forever. But each year, if the investments are, are good, and some years it's a struggle, as we've experienced, uh, we we have this pot of money that we can uh, invest in in uh, scholarships, um, and there's nothing like meeting a scholarship winner. I mean, it 
we're at the Amy Exchange, our, the Amy Annual Conference, as an example, there's scholarship recipients come to the conference, and many of them do. And there's nothing like meeting them and hearing how the scholarship helped them, how they wouldn't be able to continue their education without it, how it helped them uh, advance. And, and now we're pulling together for the Amy Foundation website uh, a list of where they are now. Um, and many of them have great stories to tell, have gone on for, to uh, make uh, notable achievements in their careers in, in the profession. And we wanna see the same thing ha happen here with Kilmer. I really do hope that it happens. Um, we are coming to a close on the time that we have. It's amazing how fast time flies. Um, any closing comments by you, um, Steve, if you can share how people can apply for the um, scholarship and grant. Um, and anything else you guys want to add um, as part of this conversation, either from a funding or recipient side, that'd be great. Steve, we'll go to you, then Janet, and then Joyce. Okay. Uh, fingers crossed, uh, the the program will launch this fall, and um, and if you're interested in applying for um, a, a scholarship or a grant, uh, just reach out to the Amy Foundation website. Uh, we're in the process of uh, launching that in the next month, and uh, and if you're interested in, in contributing, uh, also reach out to the Foundation website, or you can contact me directly. I'm always happy to help. Um, and you can also do more. You can share this video. You can um, talk within your companies about others um, who could contribute in some way. As, the, as Janet mentioned, there are numerous ways that individuals uh, and companies can contribute. So think big. And um, the, the prize at the end of the day is sweet when you get to see those um, success stories. Okay, I'll add on to that or build on that. You know, it's the, there's many ways to contribute. This specific, you know, video is about having you contribute financially so we can create the fund to be able to do the good work. But it's also become involved, you know, there, and Joyce had mentioned earlier, just even the committee, you know, to determine how the scholarships and grants are awarded are uh, 11 people, representatives from um, the industry and not just the big companies, others as well. There's lots of opportunity to be involved, not only in the foundation, um, but, but also in Amy. So I really encourage you to look at it in that way. It's not just the plea for money. It's actually, you know, encouraging you to be able to really get involved, help in this collaboration effort that we really truly believe will move things, move science to the better and for the, the improvement of health um, and patient outcomes. So please uh, consider this seriously. If you have any questions, in addition to Steve, you can feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, we're happy to be able to share everything that we're doing in a very, very open way. Um, and we really hope that you'll be able to be part of this really good thing that's happening. So I'm just going to say something about the people who might apply, right? Uh, the two of you, Jana and Steve, kind of talked about the contributors, individuals contribute. I'm, I want to say something to the students or individuals who might want to apply. Um, I would really like you to encourage it. I would like to encourage you to think about uh, a, a role in the future that might be something that would be contributing to the microbiological quality or sterility assurance of products for patients, for customers and consumers, whether that's a product that is a medical device, it's a product that's a combination product, it is a aseptically produced pharmaceutical product, it's a consumer product. Uh, you know, sometimes you think, sometimes it's just about medical devices, but it's about the whole entire product family or portfolio of products that actually reduce the potential for infection for our patients and then provides a better health for those patients, customers and consumers. So I wanna really kind of get out to the individuals that are going for their degrees, uh, going for the undergraduate or graduate degrees, who really would like to 
support patients, customers, and consumers of the future. This industry, the microbiological quality and sterility assurance industry, is an area that really can help you to get at your passion for helping others. And if you'd be interested in that area, this is a, a way for you to get some funding to support you to look for education and, and continue to not just focus on the education portion, but also the potential for funding for grants for you to do some work in that area. So I, I wanted to focus on that because I, I really want to focus on the fact that this is about those next generation and it's about the next generation really um linking in to what their passion is and what our passion is, is for our patients, customers, and consumers. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Joyce. Um, and I actually want to add on to that, the concept that the patient could be you or me. Um, and so it, or a loved one, right? Um, the, the, the longer you live, the more you realize that those patients are the people that we love and um, anything that we can do to help improve our loved ones' lives is, is definitely worth it. Um, I want to thank all three of you for joining me today. It was a lovely conversation. I feel like we're just getting into the swing of things and now it's time to stop, but uh, maybe we can come back again a little bit later after the first recipients have been um, awarded and um, go from there. So thank you all so very much. Um, can't wait to see this go live.